In my experience growing up in Christianity, the subject of slavery in the Bible was rarely mentioned, and if it was, it was easily dismissed. Most Christians never give it much thought, and some aren't even aware the subject is in the Bible, outside of Moses freeing the Hebrew slaves in Egypt. In general, there is a perception among most Christians I knew that, while God did some strange things in the Old Testament, at the end of the day, God is God, and His ways are not our ways. He knows best, and what He does is best for that time and place. Who are we to question the Creator of the universe? So with this mindset, it becomes easier to ignore some of the more strange actions of God in the Old Testament and instead tell people to read the New Testament, since that is the most relevant section of the Bible for Christians today. Well, I think it's important to have a look at what God says about slavery. Let's start with one of God's most notable attributes. For I am the Lord, I change not. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. If Jesus is God, then the same attribute applies to God. They will perish, but you remain forever. They will wear out like old clothing. You will change them like a garment and discard them. But you are always the same. You will live forever. Now, let's have a look at verses that talk about slavery. The following verses are part of the Law of Moses. Also note that it is God himself speaking. If you buy a Hebrew slave, he is to serve for only six years. Set him free in the seventh year, and he will owe you nothing for his freedom. If he was single when he became your slave and then married afterward, only he will go free in the seventh year. But if he was married before he became a slave, then his wife will be freed with him. If his master gave him a wife while he was a slave, and they had sons or daughters, then the man will be free in the seventh year, but his wife and children will still belong to his master. But the slave may plainly declare, I love my master, my wife, and my children. I would rather not go free. If he does this, his master must present him before God. Then his master must take him to the door and publicly pierce his ear with an awl. After that, the slave will belong to his master forever. Doesn't that sound like blackmail? If he declares that he wants to stay with his family, then he must become a slave forever. In the next book, Leviticus, God continues with the law. If any of your fellow Israelites become poor and sell themselves to you, do not make them work as slaves. The Israelites are my servants, whom I brought out of Egypt. They must not be sold as slaves. Wait a minute. We just saw in the previous Exodus verse that they are allowed to take Hebrew slaves. The term Hebrew was the older name for Israelites. Once the Hebrews came out of Egypt, they started being called Israelites and would later become known as Jews. So at some point between the Ten Commandments being given and the rest of the law being handed down to Moses, God had already changed his mind as to whether Israelites can become slaves. Let's continue. However, you may purchase male or female slaves from among the foreigners who live among you. You may also purchase the children of such resident foreigners, including those who have been born in your land. You may treat them as your property, passing them on to your children as a permanent inheritance. You may treat your slaves like this, but the people of Israel, your relatives, must never be treated this way. Isn't it strange how God hates the thought of his own people becoming slaves again, like they were in Egypt? But he has no problem with the children of Israel enslaving foreigners and their children? What happened to do unto others as you would have them do unto you? Many Christians believe that slavery in the Bible isn't the same as slavery as we know it today. They were just servants, not actual slaves. Let's dig deeper and see if we can find evidence of that. When a man sells his daughter as a slave, she will not be freed at the end of six years as the men are. If she does not please the man who bought her, he may allow her to be bought back again. If he himself marries her and then takes another wife, he may not reduce her food or clothing or fail to sleep with her as his wife. If he fails in any of these three ways, she may leave as a free woman without making any payment. Okay, as a slave, not only is she bound to her owner by a contract, but because she is a woman, she cannot go free after six years. Only male slaves are released after six years. Furthermore, God endorses polygamy. 
What else does God say? When a man strikes his male or female slave with a rod so hard that the slave dies under his hand, he shall be punished. If, however, the slave survives for a day or two, he is not to be punished, since the slave is his own property. Let's sum up what we've learned so far. God gives Israelites the permission to keep slaves. God first said it's okay to keep Hebrew slaves, then changed his mind and says to keep non-Israelite slaves only. God specifically endorses child slavery. God has no problem with polygamy. Slaves would have to make payment for their freedom. Male slaves are bound to their owner by contract for six years. God discriminates against female slaves. They are not to be released after six years, unlike male slaves. God commands that certain slaves be publicly humiliated by having their ear pierced with an awl to show they are forever someone's slave. God says it's okay to beat your slaves as long as they don't die as a result. After all, the slave is your property. What part of any of this is better than slavery was in North America? Even if we say that God no longer requires obedience to the law, or that those laws are only for a specific time and place, what do these commands say about God's character? Does it fit with your understanding of how the God of the Bible should act? Would Jesus say that child slavery is okay? If Jesus came to earth at that time, would he beat his slave within an inch of their life, just like his heavenly father said he could? Would Jesus advise men that it's okay to have two or more wives, just make sure you keep having sex with your previous slave wives? I thought I was done going through the relevant Old Testament verses, but later on in Deuteronomy I find this verse. If any of your people, Hebrew men or women, sell themselves to you and serve you six years, in the seventh year you must let them go free. And when you release them, do not send them away empty-handed. Supply them liberally from your flock, your threshing floor, and your winepress. Give to them as the Lord your God has blessed you. Remember that you were slaves in Egypt, and the Lord your God redeemed you. That is why I give you this command today. It looks like God changed his mind again. Now the women can be freed after six years, and not only that, but their owners are to give them all sorts of goods and send them on their way. In Exodus, having Hebrew slaves was okay. Then in Leviticus, God says Hebrews are never to be treated as slaves. But now in Deuteronomy, God says it's all good again and tells the slave owners to shower them with gifts because God feels bad about their slavery in Egypt. What is that, a guilt offering? If God feels so bad about it, why not just ban Hebrew slavery like he did back in Leviticus? See you in part two.